Tell us when to start. Uh, I think it's for today. It's another day. Yeah. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Our call to worship this morning, it comes from our United Methodist Hymnal on page 211. And you should see that on your screen. So please join us. O Emmanuel, our King and Lawgiver, the expected of the nations and their Savior. Come, Come and, and save, save us, O Lord, Lord our God. O wisdom, who came forth from the mouth of the Most High, reaching from end to end, and ordering all things mightily and 
sweetly. Come, Come and, and teach, teach us, us the way, way of prudence. O oh, Adonai, and leader of the house of Israel, who appeared to Moses in the flames of the bush and gave him the law on Sinai. Come and, and with, with your outstretched arm, redeem, redeem us. O Root of Jesse, who stands for an ensign of the people, before whom kings shall keep silence, and to whom the Gentiles shall make their supplication. Come, Come and, and deliver, deliver us, us and tarry not. not. O Key of David, and scepter of the house of Israel, who opens and no one shuts, who shuts and no one opens. Come, Come and bring forth from prison the captive who sits in darkness and in the shadow of death. O day spring, brightness of the light eternal and sun of justice. Come, Come and, and enlighten those who sit in darkness and in the shadow of death. O king of the Gentiles and the desired one, cornerstone that makes both one. Come, Come and, and deliver us whom you formed out of the dust of the earth. earth. Amen. Our opening hymn this morning should be familiar. O come, O come, Emmanuel. have the lighting of the Advent candle by the Carters. For to us, a child is born. To us, a son is given. And the government will be on his shoulders. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. with Chris. 
Christmas light. Light the Advent candle too. Think of humble shepherds who, filled with wonder at the sight of the child of Christmas night. Candle, candle burning bright, shining in the cold winter night. Candle, candle burning bright, fill our hearts with Christmas light. Light the Advent candle three, think of heavenly harmony. Angels singing peace on earth at the blessed Savior's birth. Candle, candle burning bright, shining in the cold winter night. Candle, candle burning bright, fill our hearts with Christmas light. Light the Advent candle for, think of joy forevermore. Christ child in the stable born, gift of love that Christmas morn. Candle, candle burning bright, shining in the cold winter night. Candle, candle burning bright, fill our hearts with Christmas light. We light this candle as a symbol of the Prince of Peace. May the visitation of your Holy Spirit, O God, make us ready for the coming of Jesus, our hope and joy. O come, O come, Emmanuel. Give you a moment to do that and uh, share a joy that I have uh, this morning. Yesterday, I was able to uh, wish uh, a longtime neighbor and grandmother of my very best friend, Ruby McGaffey, uh, as she enjoyed her 94th birthday. For this joy, we say, thanks be to God. Are there other joys? Other joys at this time? Um. Mark has said that he's completely recovered from COVID. For this joy, we say, thanks be to God. And for four wonderful days with her grandson in Monterey. For the joy, for this joy, we say, thanks be to God. Any other joys? If not at this time, uh, I invite you, uh, even at home, to share your joys with one another, uh, your family and friends. As this time of the season, uh, we are to focus on hope and joy. We quickly come to the point in our service where we share our concerns with one another. Let me tell you that there is power in prayer. So as always, I invite you at home to lift up the names of those um, who you are praying for, people in your family, your friends, your community, and those unspoken prayers that may not be heard by others. Our centering song this morning is Emmanuel. And while we are centering ourselves and focusing on our time of prayer, you may, uh, type your joy, I'm sorry, your concerns in the chat. As a reminder, I want to uh, lift up the names of those we are still praying for, for continued healing. Uh, Rich Hacker, Jonathan Price, Kevin Johnson, 
Frank Wines, Carol Winternets, Loretta Thomas, Ruth Hoagland, Jeff Severson, Jean Hoffman. Uh, can, we had a praise report from Mark Lyon, uh, but his spouse Daniel uh, needs prayers of healing at this time. And also Hillary Hoff. We also want to lift up all families who are bereaved this morning. Uh, Loretta Thomas and the Carter family and the loss of Loretta's twin sister, Lorraine Rinkin. Uh, prayers for Pastor Marie and family and the loss of my aunt, Pamela Price Thrower. Also lifting up prayers for all essential workers during this surge of COVID. And at this time, while we are singing our centering song, please type your prayer requests in the chat. Other prayer requests at this time. Um, Dave's lodger has been exposed to COVID. Joanne's nephew, Brian, is, is an angry and distant. For families who are struggling during this time of the year, for folks who are, are having awful days, folks who are traveling, prayers for understanding and acceptance, for those who are without food and job and housing, loving God, you've heard our extensive list this morning. You've heard all of the names that have been called and also all of the prayers that have not been spoken. We ask that you be with us in this service now as we center on grace from your Holy Spirit. As we endure so much sickness, misunderstandings, as we travel under this mandate of COVID and for all those who are on the front lines, be with us, Lord, as we continue our worship this morning and help us to remember that no matter what is going on around us, that you, Lord, are with us. These and other blessings we ask 
in your son Jesus name as we pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Sisters and brothers, be encouraged this morning. There is power in prayer. At this time in our service, we will now have our scripture lesson. And this morning, our scripture lesson comes from the Gospel of Luke, the first chapter, verses 47 through 55. And I'm reading this morning from the New International Version. And my spirit rejoices in God, my Savior, for he has been mindful of the humble state of his servant. From now on, generations will call me blessed. For the mighty one has done great things for me. Holy is his name. His mercy extends to those who fear him from generation to generation. He has performed mighty deeds with his arm. He has scattered those who are proud in their inmost thoughts. He has brought down rulers from their thrones, but has lifted up the humble. He has filled the hungry with good things, but has sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel, remembering to be merciful to Abraham and his descendants forever, just as he promised our ancestors. Brothers and sisters, this is the word of life. Thanks be to God. This time, we will have a musical selection from our praise team. praise team, like a child. Our sermon this morning is, the title of our sermon this morning, I should say, is, did you know? Did you know? This morning, we will take a closer look at the gospel of Luke. 
these first two chapters of Luke, uh, describe events that led up to the birth of Jesus Christ. Early Christian tradition suggests that this gospel was written by Luke, even though the author is unnamed. However, while the author is not named, the gospel of Luke is the only gospel that was addressed to a specific person. Luke, the first uh, chapter one, verse three says, now after having investigated everything carefully from the beginning, I have also decided to write a carefully ordered account for you, most honorable Theophilus. Scholars believe that Theophilus could have actually been a real person or that the writing was dedicated to anyone who was a believer of God since the name Theophilus came from the Greek words, God and love. While the intended audience is not quite clear, did you know that in the gospel that the nativity stories are told primarily from the perspective of women? The verses that we will consider this morning are best known as Mary's prayer of thanks. Did you know that this prayer is also known as the Magnificat, which is Latin for my soul magnifies the Lord. Before one even begins to read and reflect on the words that were said by Mary after she visits her cousin Elizabeth, but we can tell by the meaning of these two words, the Magnificat, or my soul does magnify the Lord, that what Mary has to say is quite powerful. Let us pray. God of hope, fill us with your Holy Spirit so that we may know without a shadow of a doubt that Jesus is the light of the world. As we anticipate his birth in our hearts and minds this week, help us to praise you for all that you are and all that you have done for us. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Just a few moments ago, I said that Mary's prayer of thanksgiving was powerful. It is powerful because Mary is giving praises to God for things that had occurred in the past and for things that had not come to fruition. The next few verses, she thanks God for the privilege of being chosen as the mother of the savior of the world. Verse 48 says, he has looked with favor on the low status of his servant. Look, from now on, everyone will consider me highly favored because the mighty one has done great things for me. Now, did you know that while Mary was confident when she said this, that there were those who knew her and the predicament that she was in. And they weren't quite calling her highly favored just yet. Mary goes on to state that not only had God done great things for her, but that he had been merciful to those who honored him as God from generation to generation. She adds that God had shown strength with his arm and had scattered those who were arrogant and proud. He lifted up the lowly and filled the hungry with good things while sending the rich away empty handed. She ends her prayer of rejoicing by saying that God had come to the aid of Israel, remembering the mercy that he promised to Abraham and his descendants forever. Mary 
speaks with confidence and wisdom, doesn't she? But did you know that it was believed that Mary was only between the ages of 12 and 14 at the time? Hmm. It's hard to imagine what she must have been experiencing. And more so, how could she get to the place where her soul magnified God? She had been chosen as the vessel that God would use to bring forth the Savior of the world. Through Mary, a nondescript Jewish girl, Jesus, the light of the world, would be born. Mary's soul glorified God, not for what was evident in the present, but for the vision that God had promised her in the future. I often wonder if Mary even understood the magnitude of what had been asked of her and the reality that she was not given a choice in the matter. Surely complicated things. Yet despite how things were looking, Mary trusted God. Mm, it's a lesson for us this morning. Sisters and brothers, did you know that no matter how things look, that we should trust God to walk with us and to deliver us? It appears that even as a young, at a young age, Mary somehow knew this. I imagine, though, that there were simply things she could not know. One of my absolute favorite songs that I like to listen to during the holiday season is called Mary, Did You Know? It was written by Mark Lowry. And I have enjoyed listening to it, however, sung by various artists. Uh, but my favorite versions are versions that are done by men. Uh, in particular, uh, the version uh, sung by CeeLo Green and my son, Neil. The expressive lyrics are as follows. Mary, did you know? that your baby boy would one day walk on water. Mary, did you know that your baby boy would save our sons and daughters? Did you know that your baby boy has come to make you new? This child that you've delivered will soon deliver you. Mary, did you know that your baby boy will give sight to a blind man? Mary, did you know that your baby boy will calm the storm with his hand? Did you know that your baby boy has walked where angels trod? When you kiss your little baby, you kiss the face of God. Mary, did you know the blind will see, the deaf will hear, the dead will live again, the lame will leap, the dumb will speak the praises of the Lamb. Mary, did you know that your baby boy is Lord of all creation? Mary, did you know that your baby boy would rule the nations? Did you know that your baby boy is heaven's perfect lamb? That sleeping child you're holding is the great I am. Hmm. Those haunting and powerful words 
get me every time I hear it sung. Mary could not have known everything about God's plans for her life and her son Jesus in that moment. But her praises to God in our lesson this morning shows that knowing a little bit about what was to come and remaining hoping, hopeful for the rest to work itself out allowed her to face her future with joy and anticipation. This morning, we need to know that Mary's baby boy has come to make us new. He is still able to deliver and give sight to the blind, literally and spiritually. He calms the storms of our lives and those in Christ who die will live again. Did you know this morning that he is still Lord of all creation and rules the nations. He is heaven's perfect lamb because he is the great I am. Even now, what looks uncertain and grim is only for a moment. As we celebrate the birth of Christ this week, remember that we may think we know God's plans for us. We may have a general idea about our existence or our circumstances may suggest a particular outcome and a witness to this this week. But if we could choose to allow our souls to magnify the Lord like Mary did, then God will look at us with favor and do great things for us. He will show us mercy and lift us up when we are down, fill us with good things, and come to our aid as he promised our ancestors. Saints of God, did you know that the birth of the Savior of the world that was predicted long before his earthly parents came to be is our reminder of God's love for us. This is good news. God is and will always be with us. Amen. At this point in our service, we will have our offering. continue to thank all of you uh, for continuing to give your gifts of tithes and offerings. We have all been experiencing some challenges uh, in this season, but we thank you for your faithfulness. If you have forgotten to send in your envelope this morning, that's okay. There is an option for online giving at SonomaUMC.com. And you don't have to be a member to make a donation to our ministry here. At this time, let us thank God for the gifts that we're able to give, but more importantly, every gift that we receive. Heavenly Father, giver of the most perfect gift, take these blessed offerings and bless them and multiply them for the use of your kingdom. We're always so grateful for the gift of being able to give and for those who had the desire but not the means 
Lord, we ask that you make provision. These in your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And now, please join me in our closing hymn, How Can We Name a Love, page 111 in our hymnal, and will be displayed on your screen. this morning are as follows. Uh, this week, our announcements this morning are as follows. Uh, for this week, uh, I will be in the church office tomorrow from uh, 10 to 1, uh, but there will be no um, one on site for the rest of this week. On Tuesday evening at 5 p.m., we will have a special all-church Zoom meeting uh, to discuss a hate crime that occurred at Asbury United Methodist Church in Washington, D.C. on December the 12th and how our church might respond in solidarity uh, with this historic church. It's one of the oldest churches organized by African-Americans. So all members of Sonoma United Methodist Church and all church leaders church council are encouraged to join this meeting on Tuesday evening at 5 p.m. The link will go out tomorrow. Uh, there will be no tea uh, with Pastor Marie um, this week, uh, but um, as we begin uh, the new year, we will be having a discussion of a book, Between the World and Me. I don't want to say this uh, writer's name incorrectly, but I think it's pronounced Ta-Nehisi Coates in January. So please contact the office for more information. Get excited and join us for this book discussion. We will be having a special Christmas Eve service this week at 6 o'clock p.m. Again, from the safety of your homes, we'll be streaming from the sanctuary as we are this morning. And uh, we're excited about that. The link will be sent out uh, early this week. And we encourage you to not just keep it to yourself. Share this link with your family and friends so that we can have a, a wonderful time of celebration. Also, children and parents, please get your short video clips for the children's moment to Lorna on our stream team right away. Uh, contact the office if you need more information about that. Uh, if you have not returned your pledge card for the new year, we are still happy to accept it. It has been a tough year for many of us financially, uh, but please prayerfully consider what you might give and know that God will indeed bless your efforts. Thanks to all of the children and parents who attended Pastor Marie's ornament making Zoom party yesterday. We had a fantastic time making some pretty awesome ornaments. 
uh, to add to our trees. Candy, thank you for joining us, for the wonderful craft kits that you prepared, and most of all, the training. Uh, you know, you too can make an ornament. The pastor had a little bit of trouble, but thanks to Candy, I persevered, <laughs> made my ornament. <laughs> the kids were great. Uh, last but not least, I want to thank our worship team, our praise team, our stream team, and musicians this morning. Uh, special thanks to our bell ringers, Sandra and Deb, and our director of music, Jim McFadden, this morning. It has been a wonderful time of worship with our music. And Dave, we still miss you. <laughs> And at this time, that is all the announcements that I have. We have, it seems like our time together goes by so quickly. Uh, but I want to encourage you to remember this week that as we anticipate the birth of Jesus Christ in our hearts and minds, remember, keep in mind that God is always with us, no matter what it looks like. Until we meet again, Merry Christmas, and remember to stay faithful, stay hopeful, and to love one another. Go in peace.